All right, today's video, we're going to create a Windows drive from an ISO image. So first, we have to get the Windows.ISO image. We can just create it, and Microsoft actually helps with this. Surprise, surprise, right? So we're going to create the uh, ISO image. We're going to download that. We're going to use another free piece of software, Win to USB. And when to USB will take that ISO image and it'll burn it down to our drive via USB. So I have an M2 solid state drive SSD, uh, 120 gigabyte Kingston that I'm going to use on my new CPU rig. So I have an adapter. I hook in the uh, M2 drive and that has a USB connection which hooks into the uh, rig on which I'm going to run Win to USB to burn the ISO image. So let's just get started. I just want to make this video because I do it so many times, but then there's such a long period between times I do it, I forget how I did it. So that is why I'm making the video so I can always go back to refer to it, keep it short and sweet as much as possible to get the key points because uh, this is how I do it. I don't use Hive OS. If I was using Hive OS, I would just burn Hive OS OS, which is Linux, to a, a USB stick, blam, pop that in, boots up, you're all good to go. Uh, I like doing things in Windows yet. I know it's old school, it's archaic, but that's how I am running yet all my rigs. So let's just get started. All right, go into Chrome. Let's bring up Chrome. I thought I had it running. All right, is that it? All right. Simply uh, URLs right there if you can see it. If not, just search for create an ISO file for Windows 10. ISO. When that comes up, it's a Microsoft page, support.microsoft.com. When that comes up, go to step one. Step one. Can you guys read that? Hold on. This is, there we go. Step one on Windows 10 download page. You want to download the media creation tool. Media creation tool. That is your friend. So click on this. It might take a little bit to come up. Uh, it's slow for some reason. And we're waiting, we're waiting. Oh gosh, come on, Windows. Come on, Microsoft, you can do it. There we go, fantastic. So I'm gonna actually give you guys a break and not put you through this misery. Uh, go down to Create Windows 10 Installation Media. You'll have a button, Download Tool Now. You wanna download that puppy, let it download. It takes a little bit. Once you download it, I just dump it into my downloads folder. So let's go there. I've already downloaded it like five minutes ago. Just to keep things short and sweet. And let's get back up here. Ignore all my clicks. It's just how my remote desktop is set up. And uh, da, 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 da. go to my downloads folder. You're going to get a file called Media Creation Tool. And mine is media creation tool 21h2.exe. You're going to kick that little bug, little puppy off. Blammo. Run it. Yes. It's going to come up. Let this thing come up, spin up, do its magic. And just for time's sake, to keep this as short as possible, I know sometimes you got to wait on Microsoft. I already have the ISO image created. I'll show you what I clicked on and we'll get rolling, okay? Otherwise, it takes like 10 minutes to get this thing created. Uh, but let's it's taken a long time for this This uh, setup to do so come through it pops up. Yeah. Yeah, I accept whatever nobody reads that stuff Getting a few things ready. Thank you, Microsoft Thank you You're my best friend All right uh, Let's go. We're gonna get this media creation tool and the whole point of this is to have an ISO image on which you uh, can make multiple, you know make your Windows bootable drives from so you can run your rigs this is how I do it. Okay, now we are at the what do you want to do? And you do not want to upgrade the PC now. You don't want to do that. You want to create the installation media, USB flash drive, DVD, or ISO file for another PC. Click on that radio button. Got it? And then hit next. Blammo. And then it's going to come up with these defaults. You can't change them any anyway. Go ahead and click next. And then you want to click ISO file, ISO file. 
and uh, that's going to download or that's going to create a .iso file in your uh, folder you specify on the next one right here see that I put it in downloads I already ran this this takes like a few minutes I'm not going to do it again I'll show you just click save it's going to start running and it's going to go for like I said five to ten minutes and uh, then you will have your file I'm going to you're done with this you can close out of this it'll say yeah I'm done okay cleans up and it exits it creates this windows.iso file for you now you are ready to rock and roll you will need this piece of software right here okay so the next thing you want to do is you want to get this piece of software called win to usb free.exe it's spelled w-i-n-t-o-u-s-b so you can search for that you'll find it download that that's your installer click on it it's going to ask you all the basic stuff english yes all right, I've already installed it. So just run through the installation project. Just hit yes, yes, yes. It's going to default it, and it, may, it puts a shortcut on your desktop. It's called Haslio Win to USB. Click on it. All right, it's got Win to USB .exe. Yes, I want to run that. Now right here on this screen, it's asking you for the image file. That file is the ISO image you just created from the Windows Media Creation Tool. Click on the folder icon there it is window.iso it's 4.49 4.5 gigabyte window.iso that's what you want blammo i do windows 10 home blammo next please select the destination disk this is the disk the drive usb drive s uh, sata drive whatever external hard drive plugged in to your usb where you want this iso image flash to written to installed on whatever you want to call it Oh, problem. This is one of the headaches. All right. I actually put in the USB, which is the M2 adapter for the uh, solid state drive that doesn't show up. So this is the workaround. You're going to go crazy. Oh, where's it at? And you can hit recycle, right? See if that works. Negative. Didn't work. So what you have to do, I have to do this stupid thing here. Okay. You have to go over here and you have to bring open the uh, create and format hard disk partition. Now make sure your USB drive is already plugged in at this point. Once you do that, and then go ahead and run this guy. This is your Windows create and format hard disk partition. Be very careful here. Bring it up. It's going to ask you, once you launch it, it's going to ask you an important question. Blammo, this is what you want to see. Uh, you, must uh, you must initialize a disk before Logical Disk Manager can access it. So it's looking at the disk. It sees it. It's right here, disk one. You can see it in the background, right? All right, let me go back to so you can get rid of the fuzziness here. Disk zero is my main drive on the rig, which is native. It's there. It's running. Don't mess with that. Disk one is the one, the one I have plugged in in the USB slot. It doesn't know what to do with it. That's what it's saying. You need to initialize it so the Win to USB application can recognize it. I just say MBR disk one I confirm it's disk one and not my main boot disk because I don't want to whack that thing so go ahead initialize this disk one say okay MBR blammo and that is all hopefully all you need to do is recycle there it is oh my god it actually worked all right there it is that is what I'm talking about all right, so I picked my drive. That's a little thing they don't tell you about. You got to go initialize that USB and uh, for Win to USB to pick it up. All righty, I'm just gonna do. Um, you could do either thing here. Uh, you could do GPT if you're doing UEFI. Sometimes you want to do that if you're doing GPUs. We could do GPT. Let's just do GPT. It's gonna UEFI MBR for BIOS. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to remember what I did before in the past, just to be consistent. Master boot record or a GPT for the UEFI. UEFI is in your uh, BIOS. When you boot up, you select the type of drives, and you can say, I just want UEFI drives, and sometimes that's better, a better way to run this thing. For my, my situation here, let's just do that. I'm going to say GPT for UEFI. Say yes. All right, so now we're starting and formatting. This is the drive off your USB stick. It's, this is what it sees. This is what it's going to do. Uh, select your partitions. I don't touch any of this stuff. 
I'm going to do legacy. I'm going to do all this. I'm just going to say next, right? This time I hit next. All right, this is going to take a long time. I'm going to cut away. We'll come back. It's actually installing. All right, as you can see, the installation was successful. I now have Windows ISO installed on my M2 solid state drive. Went to USB, took the ISO image specified, and wrote it out to the uh, SATA drive, the S uh, solid state drive, M2 in my case. Could be a USB drive, could be an external hard drive, could be a uh, SATA drive, whatever. You have to have the adapter coming into this rig here on a USB, and hence went to USB, and it's there, ready to roll. I am done. I can exit out of this, or I have the option to burn another one. If I want to do multiple uh, installations of Windows, I can do it. So there you go. Windows, Microsoft helps you with this by creating the ISO for you, and then using the free software, Windows USB, will actually install it onto your drive. Now I'm going to take that M2 drive, uh, pop it into a new motherboard, and then it will boot up, and it will boot up in Windows startup installation mode. So I now have to go through the whole process of configuring Windows for that new rig. Uh, and then I'm good to go. And what, uh, what I do, and this is a pro tip, right? When you're installing Windows for the first time, and it comes up and you're going through the steps, unplug your Ethernet cable. Do not use Internet. You want to install without any of that connection because you don't want them installing all these extra files you do not need and it'll give you the option on the install and saying uh, hook up the internet you'll say no continue without the internet continue the installation process without internet and that is my pro tip just to keep it a nice clean install and if you want to add stuff later you can once you connect up that rig to the internet that's all I got to say on that so here we go hope this helps I know this helps me it puts it in uh, puts it in video format for later reference because you will forget this stuff. If you don't do it every day, you will forget. So I hope this helps somebody. And uh, again, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all later, guys. Take care.